Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen ben Danun with the Danun Institute of Biblical Research, and I trust that you can bear with me today. I, the message I want to bring you, I'm very, ended up coming down with a very bad uh, case of the flu here, so I've kind of medicated myself up with as much cold medicine as I can stand in order to bring this out, because I think it's very important that you hear this message. Uh, both to my Jewish and Gentile friends alike. I think this is a message that is critical for you to hear. Um, I'll try to be as brief as I can, but I think that you owe it to yourself to, to hear it because things are fulfilling right under our nose and we're not really paying attention to the things that are taking place. Um, I'm still in the book of Chronicles and I can't seem to get away from that because there's just so much insight there that is prophetic. Uh, we often hear that history repeats itself and it's exactly what happens uh, in the life of the next king after Jehoshaphat and that'll be Jeho Jeroham, um, his son. I want to say it in Hebrew, so sorry. Uh, so we go to chapter 21 of Second Chronicles and this is where we're going to read from. Now Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, and Jehor Jehoram, Jehoram, that's how we say it in Hebrew, his son reigned in his stead, or reigned in his place. Uh, and he had brethren, the sons of Jehoshaphat, uh, Azariah, and um, uh, of, of uh, Jehoshaphat, Azariah, and uh, Je Jehael and Zechariah and Azariah and Michael and Shephatiah, all these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. And their father gave them great gifts, silver and gold, and of precious things which, uh, with the fin cities in Judah. But the kingdom gave he uh, to Jehoram. Uh, Jehoram. I'm going to have to say it in Hebrew, sorry guys, it's easier for me to pronounce it that way. Jehoram. Um, because he was the firstborn. Now, when Jehoram was risen up to the kingdom of his father, he strengthened himself and slew all his brethren with the sword and divers also of the princes of Israel. And this is right where this is going to begin. And you're going to see in this all these mess and all this message here. You're going to see Israel typed out. You're going to see. Uh, the time of Yeshua typed out, you'll see after the time of Yeshua, you'll see the times of, um, and even in modern days, all laying right here in the story of Yehoram, the king of Israel, uh, who is very ungodly. He did not walk in the way of his father Jehoshaphat, but he walks in the way of, the, of King Ahab, like the kings of Israel, that had also sinned and angered God. Now, if you remember the other day, I brought out a message because of this, and uh I think that we find that in verse 7. But let me just continue on. When he says that he slew all his brethren and divers also of the princes of Israel. Now, uh, Jehoram or Jerome is, is a type of Israel during the time of Christ. Uh, Christ was the prince of peace and he was slew. He was killed by uh, his own brethren, uh, Israel. And of course, uh, they killed, when it says they killed his, his own brethren, that was the apostles, those that believed in Yeshua to be the Messiah. Israel rose up and killed them for it, hunted them down and killed all of them that they possibly could. Even Paul was consenting into the death, death of Stephen uh, as well. Uh, so we, we go on to read, it says, uh, Jehoram was 30 and 2 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 8 years in Jerusalem and walked in the way of king, the kings of Israel, uh, like as did the house of Ahab, for he had the daughter of Ahab to wife, and he wrought that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord. And again, there it is again, 2,000 years ago, and Israel took and married in Rome, brought Rome into Israel. That is the daughter of Jezebel. That is the covenant that they made back then. Um, but God said, Howbeit the Lord would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant that he had made with David as he promised to give a light to him, to his sons forever. I explained that to you the other day. That light, the word in Hebrew is nia, uh, nun yod uh, resh, and it happens to deal with um, a light in a vessel, uh, spoken of in the in the Tanakh, uh, in the Torah, 
is a the light from the golden uh, candles that, 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 that emits their light. We see this also in John's writing in the book of Revelation. Um, so it is, it is that light, but it also means to plow or to break up the ground. And as I shared with you, that yes, that's exactly what Yeshua came to do. He came to break up that ground in order to plant that seed. And that seed is the light of God, which also bears record in the book of John's writings when it said that, that he was the light of men. Okay, that's, so just so you're aware of that. Now, uh, verse 8. In the days of the, uh, the Edomites revolted from under the dominion of Judah and made themselves a king. This is when Constantine, as we have to see, you know, because you have to remember the Edomites had already, had already revolted out from under Israel, uh, even back at this time here. But that king, we see that kingdom being built in Rome uh, under Constantine. And then he's getting power over Israel as a result. Uh, then uh, Jehoram went forth with his princes and all his chariots with him and rose up by night and smote the Edomites, which compassed him in the captains of, of the chariots. So the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. The same time also did Le, uh, Libna revolt from under his hand because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. Moreover, he had uh, high places in the mountains of Judah and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication and compelled Judah thereto. That's the sad part. We're seeing one man who, bring, who marries the daughter of Jezebel brings such idolatry into Israel and causes all of Israel, the house of Judah, to sin as a result. Very much what happened 2,000 years ago when they refused to believe that Yeshua was Messiah. Um, and there came a writing to him from uh, Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus saith Lord God of David thy father, because thou hast not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat thy father, nor in the ways of uh, Asa king of Judah, but hast walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and hast made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a whoring like to the whoredoms of the house of Ahab. Um... And also has slain thy brethren of thy father's house, which were better than thyself. Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people, and thy children, and thy wives, and thy goods. And thou shalt have great sickness by disease of thy bowels, until thy bowels fall out by reason of the sickness day by day. That. My friends, this is an incredible scripture to see the, what God does to Jehoram, the king of Israel at that time, for the evils that he has done. And ironically, we see the same thing with Judas Issachariot, uh, who betrays uh, Yeshua, who betrays Jesus to the Roman authority, turns him over, hands over his own brother to them. And the Bible says, in another place that he, he uh, plunged headlong and all of his bowels gushed out. So even with the king of Israel, we see that very type in Judas who uh, conspired with the children of Israel to do this. And so therefore the children of Israel also reaped the sins of Judas uh, going into exile. And of course their wives, children, all the little ones, they were all plagued uh, as a result of what Judas did. Uh, because they were one with him in this, in consenting to the death of Yeshua. Uh, again, please pardon me. I do not feel good at all right now. Uh, moreover, the Lord stirred uh, up against uh, Yehoram, the spirit of the Philistines and the uh, Arabians that were near the, the Ethiopians, and they came up into Judah and break it into it and carried away all the substance that was found in the, king, in the king's house, and his sons also, and his wives, so that there was never a son left him, save uh, uh, Jeho Jehoahaz, the youngest of his sons. And after all this, the Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease, and it came to pass that in the process of time, after the end of two years, his bowels fell out by reason of his sickness, so he died of sore disease, and his people made no burning for him like the burning of his fathers. Thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned in Jerusalem eight years and departed without being desired. 
Howbeit they buried him in the city of David, but not in the sepulcher of the kings. Very interesting indeed, his end there. But when we get into chapter 22, it really gets interesting over here. Let's, re let's look at this real quick. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made uh, Ahaziah, his youngest son, king in his stead, for the band of men that came with the Arab Arabians to the camp had slain all the uh, eldest. Uh, so Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of, of Judah, reigned. Forty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. Now, Athaliah, you need to really watch her. I want you to watch what happens with her. And by the way, she is going to be a type of the church. She'll be a type of Rome, the Vatican itself. All right, so watch what she does. He also walked in the ways of his house, in the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. Wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab, for they were in counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. He walked also after their counsel and went with Jehoram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Hazel, king of Syria, at Ramoth Gilead. And the Syrians smote uh, Jerome, and he returned to be healed in Jezreel because of the wounds which were given him at Ramah when, to, when he fought with Hazal, the king of Syria, and Azariah, the son of Jerome. King of Judah went down to see Jerome, the son of Ahab, at Jezreel because he was sick. And the destruction of Ahaziah was of God by coming to... Um, to Jerome, for when he was come, he went out with uh, Jehoram against uh, Jehu, the son of Nimshi, when the Lord had anointed to cut off, whom the Lord had anointed to cut off, uh, uh, anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. And it came to pass that when Jehu was executing judgment, found the princes of Judah and the sons of the brethren of Ahaziah that ministered to Isaiah, he slew them, killed every one of them. And he sought Isaiah, and they caught him, for he was hid in Samaria, and brought him to Jehu. And when they had had slain him, they buried him uh, because and said they, that he is the son of Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with all his heart. So the house of Isaiah had no power to keep still the kingdom. Hmm. Watch how it unfolds. I'm, I'm sorry I'm reading all this here to you. Uh, if I had it memorized, I'd just kind of highlight it for you, but I don't. So just kind of bear with me. But when Athaliah, here she comes again, the mother of, of Ahaziah saw that her son was dead, she rose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. Interesting, isn't it? exactly what happens there. Just like in 70 AD, the Romans come in and they begin to wipe out every Jew there is. All right, now, so she rises up and she begins to kill everybody, all the royal seed. And he was with them, uh, excuse me here, but uh, Je Jehosha, uh, Jehosha Beath the daughter of the king, took Joash, the son of Haziah, and stole him from among the king's sons that were slain, and put him and his nurse in a bedchamber. So Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king of Jehoram, the wife of Jehodiah, the priest, for she was the sister of Haziah, and hid him from Athaliah, so that she slew him not. Kind of makes you think about Yeshua and Moses, if you think about it, because they were both hidden as well. In fact, uh, Moses' sister watches to see what would uh, would come, become of uh, her brother uh, as he is in the reeds next to the river. Anyway, though, uh, as it goes on to say here, um, 
So, of course, the daughter, she hides it. She's, okay, in verse 12, and he was with them. He had in the house of God six years, and Athaliah reigned over the land. And in the seventh year, Jehodiah strengthened himself and took the captains of hundreds. Now, notice the time frame that Athaliah reigns. Six years. Now, the seventh year, she's still reigning even in the seventh year. But they start making ready. They start making ready for this young man to become king. So it says in the seventh year, um, Jehoiadiah strengthened himself and took the captains of hundreds and Azariah, the son of Jerome, and Ishmael, the son of Jehoram and Azah, Azariah, the son of Obed, and Messiah, the son of um, of Adiah and El Elishaphat, the son of Zechariah, and to the covenant with him. And they went about in Judah and gathered the Levites out of all the cities of Judah and the chief of the fathers of Israel. And they came to Jerusalem. And all the congregation made a covenant with the king. In the house of God and in uh, and he said unto them, Behold, the king's son shall reign, as the Lord hath said uh, of the sons of David. So this king is actually typing out Christ himself and his return. This is the thing that you shall do, a third part of you entering in on the Sabbath of the priest, and the Levites shall be porters of the doors. And the third part shall be the king's house, and the third part at the gate and the foundations, and all the people shall be in the courts of the house of the Lord. But let none come into the house of the Lord, save the priest, and they that minister of the Levites, they shall, they shall go in, for they are holy, but the people shall keep the watch of the Lord. Hmm. Watchman, watchman of the night. And the Levites shall compass in the king round about every man with his weapon. Notice that again, verse 7. And the Levites shall compass the king round about every man with his weapons in his hand. And whosoever else cometh into the house, he shall be put to death. But ye with the king, when ye cometh in and when you goeth out. The priest actually being armed. This is why I titled this message the way I did as far as when I wrote on there, Prophecy Before Your Eyes. Do you not realize that even now, for the first time in the history of Israel, since this particular time here, the priests, the Levites, are beginning to arm themselves in Israel. They've been joining the military there. You know, they're making ready for the return of the Messiah. And could it be that this is what we're seeing as they're getting prophecy is beginning to be fulfilled right before our eyes? I can't really say for sure, but I found that extremely interesting when I read this. Anyhow, it says here in verse 8, So the Levites and all Judah did according to the things that uh, Jehoiada the priest had commanded and took every man his... Uh, his men that were to come on the Sabbath with them, that were to go out on the Sabbath. For Jehoiadiah the priest dismissed not the courses. Moreover, Jehoiadiah the priest delivered to the captains of the hundred spears and bucklers and shields that had been King David's, which were in the house of God. And he set all the people, every man having his weapon in his hand, from the right side of the temple to the left side of the temple, along by the altar of the temple, by the king round about. Then they brought out the king's son and put him the, uh, put him the crown and gave him the testimony and made him king. And Jehodiah and his sons anointed him and said, God save the king. Do you not realize Israel is in preparation for her coming Messiah, for her king. 
and the priests have armed themselves. And they're making ready. While this woman, Athiah, Aleph, how do you say her name again? I always get her name mixed up here. Uh, Athaliah, who's a type of Rome, has been ruling over Israel, ruling over the nations for the last... It's interesting because we have seven churches of Asia Minor. Now, I believe that those spirits of those churches are in every single age that we've had down, but some people call it the, uh, the, the ages of seven, the seven churches. You know, even Chuck Missler talks about how that they harmonically fit the pattern of the, the spirit of the church down to the ages. But you'll always find, though, in every single age, if you want to call it an age, you'll find in every age, all seven of those spirits existing in those ages. I did a message on that a little while back just to show you that. There's always been Laodiceans. There were Laodiceans in the first time when the seven churches of Asia Minor were mentioned in Revelation. There were Laodiceans that were lukewarm during the Dark Ages. There were Laodiceans here in the day you're living in now. That's why I find it very interesting. So, nonetheless, seven years, or in, this, or in the seventh year, they begin to get together again. Then they brought out of the king's sons and they put upon him the crown and gave him the testimony and made him king. And Jehodiah his son anointed him and said, God save the king. And when Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king, she came to the people and to the house of the Lord. Also shows the third temple will be built. And also shows she has access to that temple. And she looked and behold the king stood at, at his pillar and the entering in and the princes and the trumpets by the king and all the people of the land rejoiced and sounded with trumpets. Also the singers were with instruments of music and such as taught to sing praise. Then Athaliah rent her clothes and said, Treason, treason. Then Jehodiah the priest brought out the captain of hundreds that were set over the house, host, excuse me, and said unto them, Have her forth of the ranges. And whosoever followeth her, let him be slain with the sword. For the priest said, Slay her not in the house of the Lord. So they laid hands on her. And when she was come to the entering of the horse gate by the king's house, they slew her there. And Jeho Jehoadiah made a covenant between him, between all the people, and between the king, that they should be the Lord's people. I'll close with it right there. One of the things I really wanted you to see, though, is that she types that church. Jehoram, or Jehoram, the king, typed Judas. He betrayed Christ, and his bowels gushed out of him as well. She had her season to reign, but it was also said to kill all those that are with her. All these different denominational systems and ministers and stuff that are joining up with the Vatican, death will be your reward. So, they're all put to death. Now, and then of course the other thing that really got me was the fact that the Levites had armed themselves. Levites have only armed themselves three times in the biblical history. There was one time during the time of Joshua. There was a time here uh, with the king during right after the uh, in this particular place in Second Chronicles. And it'll also be in this day, which we're already seeing take place. I believe the coming of the Messiah is at hand. A lot of things will start taking place now. Pray for us. We'll be praying for you as well. I know, and guys, many of you guys send me requests, different avenues, email, 
Facebook. Facebook's a hard place for me to see them. So if you watch this video, just remember, I get so many messages. Sometimes people will message me there and I just don't get a chance to answer it because I get hundreds of them. And that's every day. So just be patient. If you got a, if you got a prayer request, so send it to us. Go to, go to our website, IsraelReturns.com. There's a contact link on there. Just fill out your prayer request. Try to make it as, as simple as possible and put in there, if it's an urgent prayer, please note that as well in the subject line, urgent prayer. That's what I like to give priority to. God bless you. We love you. And thank you for being a part of this ministry and supporting this ministry.